Cocos, or what you might know as focaccia or flatbreads, can be found in bakeries all across Spain because it's the perfect mid-morning solution to that mealtime they call almuerdo. It's around 10.30 or 11 in the morning, you take a short break, and you have a little something so that it tides you over until lunchtime at 2 or even 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Hola! Welcome back to my Spanish kitchen. This is where I share all kinds of tasty recipes based on Spain's incredibly healthy lifestyle so that you can feed yourself and your family the same healthy Mediterranean way every day. Many people know this as the Mediterranean diet, and so I've tagged these videos with the same recommendations so you can see just how easy it is to follow it too. Most of my recipes are simple and fast. This one's simple, but not so fast because we're making a bread and that takes time for the fermentation process to allow the dough to rise. But the ingredients couldn't be simpler. Two cups of warm water, 14 grams of active dry yeast, and a pinch to a teaspoon of sugar just to help that fermentation process get going. Once that's done, we'll add five and a quarter cups of bread flour, more finely chopped rosemary, the zest of a lemon, two tablespoons of olive oil, and that's it. The simple way to start this is to take your warm water, add the yeast, the sugar to it, and let it set in a relatively warm place for 10 minutes, and it'll start to ferment. But because I am so lucky to own a Thermomix, which is one of Europe's classic kitchen appliances, I can use this to make the whole process a lot faster and a lot easier. It weighs my ingredients, I put everything in the bowl. I measure right to the amount of water I need. I put the lid on it. I go back. I set this for two minutes. Way too fast. There we go. I'm gonna set my temperature at 37 degrees, and when I turn the speed on, I'm turning it to one, and I'll come back in two minutes, and this'll be all ready. It's been two minutes, so I'm ready to add the flour. If you're using the countertop method, pause the video for eight minutes and come back and join me. The first thing I'm going to do is add two tablespoons of olive oil. I love the silky texture that olive oil adds to bread when it's baking. And I'm using a pretty flavorful olive oil today because I love what it does for this bread. It's called Picual. It's one of the best known olive oils in Spain, but it's strong. It's got a lot of bite to it. I just love it for the flavor. So now that we've got those two tablespoons in, I'm going to use my scale and you're gonna be putting in five and a quarter cups of flour. I'm adding 630 grams. Everything's almost ready. I'm gonna take this over to the dough mode. I'm going to dial in two minutes. I'm gonna add in my lemon zest, about a teaspoon, and it took an entire lemon to get that. Very finely chopped fresh rosemary, one tablespoon, and a tablespoon of salt. And once I get ready to turn that, all I have to do is that and walk away. It's been two minutes and the Thermomix has done its job for me. Wait till you see how easy this is. Look at the dough. Now let me put down a little bit of flour so we have a nice surface to put it out onto. And bingo. <laughs> now, that's as much of the job as the Thermomix does for baking bread. But look at how incredibly clean this is. Whoop, a couple of little pieces in here. I'll pull these out and that's it. All I wanna do now is very gently pull this together in a bowl. And to do that, I'm just bringing it in on itself. I really don't even have to do this much of it. The next thing I wanna do is turn this over, let this rest while I add some oil to this bowl. And the importance of adding the oil is that you wanna make sure that there's no friction as this sits and starts to rise and double in volume. 
And so what I like to do is really coat the inside of the bowl well. There, now I can set my dough straight into the bowl. Roll it around so it's got some of that oil all the way around it. And now we'll be assured that it will rise without being attached. And here's my other trick. Use a shower cap. If you don't have one, plastic wrap will do. But I simply put a shower cap on top of this. If it's cool, I'll wrap it in a towel to keep it extra warm. But we'll come back and look at this in just about an hour. It should be doubled in size and we'll be ready to go and put it in the oven. It's been a little over an hour. Let's take off the cap and see what we got. <laughs> look at that. Nice and puffy. So let's gently take this dough out. And you can see from having the oil in the pan how easy this is to release. That simple. And now I'm going to turn it and start to stretch it out. You want to be a little gentle because you don't want to lose too much of the rise that you got from the dough. But we're also going to let it go for another 10 minutes once I have this fairly evenly spread so that we can let it rise a second time and then we'll finish it with the toppings. In the same amount of time it took to preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius, the dough had a chance to go through a second stage of rising and I'm going to gently peel back the plastic wrap and now we're ready to dress this. The most important part is you choose whatever flavors of, of topping you want. Frequently, if you go to a bakery, you'll find it with a thin coating of tomato sauce or tomatoes and anchovies or another kind of a crunchy, floury topping, mixed vegetables, all different kinds of things. Today, I'm going with thinly sliced lemons, thinly sliced onions, and some fresh rosemary I just pulled from the garden. Once again, I'm also using that Piqual olive oil. I love it so much, it's got so much flavor. And all we have to do is mix these things together a little bit with the olive oil. I slice the, the onions nice and thin, and then I cut them in half so that everybody gets a little bit of lemon and a little bit of uh, onion and a little bit of rosemary, and then I'll evenly distribute the anchovies. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil by brushing them on the edges so that the edges are just as crispy and crunchy. And I really like it that way. So now we're ready to go. And as I mentioned, 450 degrees. We're going to put this in and watch it at about 30 minutes. This should be done. Hey, this looks ready to me. Check that out. It's got this beautiful golden crust. It's nice and puffy in the center. The little lemons all have a little bit of crusty roasted edge to them, and I know how good that tastes. So all we have to do is transfer this to the cutting board. And it should, oh, it does slide right off. So what should we do? I guess we'll try to cut this in eight pieces. Oh, <laughs> It feels like it's going to be perfect. Oh my goodness, beautiful steam. Look at the rise on that. Nice and puffy, fresh. And we'll layer these all on in a nice way. And now for my taste. Thanks a lot for joining me today. And stick around while we continue to explore incredibly healthy Spanish recipes that take advantage of eating the Mediterranean way every day.